Welcome back. All right, so Monday night, I'm going to do a little... Now, there's only two games on tonight, so I'm not expecting, like, a ton of views for this. So I'm going to just throw something in here. Uh, for power ranking purposes, Tampa Bay doesn't move based on tonight's result. Detroit doesn't move based on tonight's result. I did drop the Islanders down a bit. I did move Columbus up a bit. Not every win, not every loss affects the overall power rankings. I've I've talked about that when I do power rankings videos, but again, this is an example of where I say, okay, I still think I have teams at the right spot, or yeah, no, I need to move this one up, or I need to move that one down. It's a debate every week, so a little bit of a behind-the-scenes look at things. All right, first up, Islanders in Tampa. So it was Varlamov versus Vasilevsky. Uh, the Islanders continue this 13-game road, tri road trip. And I did see one comment today I was going to answer about, well, why is that such a big deal? Why is a 13-game road trip to start the season a big deal? You go over a month, you haven't played a home game? It's it's a big deal. Uh, it's a lot of wear and tear. And honestly, for the Islanders, I think it's starting to show. And I think it showed in this game. So yeah, Varlamov, Vasilevsky, Maroon and Chara had a fight at the opening. I don't know what that's about, but yeah, uh, Maroon and Chara not liking each other much. Uh, game 1000, Frandy Green. So the opening goal is actually from the Islanders. It's Barzell on a breakaway from Parisi at 2.53. Got to say, I watched that and I said, all right, Islanders came out to play. But Tampa, to their credit, they answer right away. It's Pollock with the turnover. Joseph finishes it at 3.16 from Kalorn. So Joseph 3.16 says, I just tied the game. And uh, some back and forth action follows. So, yeah. Uncharacteristic turnover by Pollock, and when you get one of those, you got to put it in the net. Tampa does. Uh, Perry then had a wraparound that wouldn't go. Corey Perry still waiting for that first goal as a Tampa Bay Lightning member. You can see it's starting to bother him. So, Bolts pressed, the Islanders iced it. Uh, shots are 5-3 to three for the Bolts halfway through the first period. There was a crossbar then for Palat. Parisi had a chance that was kicked out. Bellows fires one wide. Bellows back in the lineup tonight. Uh, Nelson to Beauvillier and almost, but doesn't quite connect. Uh, Palat was hit with a Sergachev shot. That looked painful. Uh, with 2.44 left, the Bolts get a power play. Uh, the Islanders, though, they, they prevented the Bolts from setting up on that one. Uh, Hedman had a shot that was blocked. But shortly after the power play ends, Tampa Bay scores. It's Sorelli from Palat and Hedman at 19.22. So after one period of play, it is 2-1 in favor of Tampa Bay. Uh, second period at 19 seconds, Perry takes a penalty. The Islanders get a power play. The Bolts did kill that off, however. Uh, Belmar then had a centering pass that was missed by everybody he was trying to pass the puck to. It went through at least a couple of Lightning players and a, uh, an Islander or two as well, I believe. Uh, then there was a near miss on a pass to Palat. Uh, Varlamov saves as the Bolts would press. The Bolts then turn it over. The Islanders get some pressure. Uh, Kalorn up the ice the other way, blasts one wide. Uh, Joseph had one bounce over his stick, or he might have had a second goal of the game. Clutterbuck had a shot blocked as the Islanders get their turn with some pressure. Nice back and forth in this game. Power play for the Islanders. Uh, we then get, during that power play, Nelson fighting Sorelli. Uh, Sorelli gets the instigator for a hit by Nelson. Nelson, they looked at it, they thought it was a five-minute charge. They did the review, decided it was two. Since Sorelli gets the instigator, that's two, five, and ten. So he's not out of the game, but he's gone for 17 minutes. So he goes to the room. It all evens out. And uh, so the Islanders with that power play, but that's killed off. The Islanders then go right back to the power play. They're third and final of the game, and the Bolts killed that off. And honestly, the Islanders' power play, not great tonight. Uh, things get scrummy with 112 left. Uh, Perry was after Bellows because there was a hit Bellows through that he didn't like. And again, to me, I think it's Perry also being kind of frustrated just at the fact he's not getting goals and... It's not going the way for him in Tampa that he'd like it to. So we go to the third period, still 2-1. to one. Uh, Martin wanted a fight with Perry right off the hop. Perry said, no. I, I always get a kick out of that when a guy's like, you know, throws down his stick, goes, come on, let's go. And the other guy goes, yeah. yeah I, I don't think so. So yeah, Perry skates away. Um, uh, Beauvillier then had a chance that was defended. Palat had a chance at the other end. That was blocked. Stamkos with a tip shot. That's gloved and held. The Bolts get a power play with 9.21 left. There was a shorthanded chance for Pajot during that. Uh, point, point at a shot, the tip wide. The Islanders did kill it. But then it's Braden Point. He scores at 13.28, and that makes it 3-1. The Bolts, understanding that, that now this is their game, they press for another. 
Things get fighty with 521 left. The Bolts come out of that with a power play, and they score on it. It's Stamkos uh, scoring from Hedman and Point at 1530. Uh, the Bolts go back to the power play. That one is unsuccessful. Palmieri then had a rush chance late that was saved. Tampa Bay wins this one 4-1. to one. They go to 8-3-3 eight, three and three on the season. Uh, they are really starting to roll. And for the Islanders, 5-5-2 five, five and two on the season. So they stay at the bottom of the Metro. And for the rest of the Atlantic, it's bad news that Tampa Bay is really getting it together. But they are. Shots 13 to 6 Tampa in the first, 12 to 3 Islanders in the second, 12 to 8 Tampa in the third. Final shots 28 to 26 for Tampa. Power plays 0 for 3 for the Islanders, 1 for 4 for Tampa. Both teams had 41 hits. Very physical game. Barlamov 24 saves on 28 shots. Vasilevsky 24 saves on 25 shots. It's almost as if these teams had a playoff round last season and the year before, and there's a built in frustration between, between them. I'm here for it. So, uh, looking forward to the rematch as soon as that can happen. All right, next up, and last up, Detroit and Columbus. So, for for Detroit, this was this this is one of those games they may look back at and say, "Man, we let that one get away." And then, you know, do things get better? Do things get worse? We'll see. So, it was Grace versus Merzlikens. Uh, the first chance was actually for Fabry. Uh, Grace then robbed Nyquist at the other end. Roslovic had a shot that was saved. So both goaltenders looked pretty good early in this one. Uh, Corelli to Robinson doesn't quite click. The shots were 5-2 to two for Columbus at 8 minutes. Uh, no goals for Chinikov. So <laughs> and I, I'm thinking during this game, I'm like, this is going to be a bit. I'm just going to keep this going. We'll see how far it goes with Chinikov. Little did we know. So there was no goals for him. Uh, Wings evened up the shots at the half. Both goalies had been sharp to this point. There was a turnover to Larkin. Don't give it to Larkin. The puck bounces away from him, though. Uh, Voracek had a rush chance that was defended. Bean couldn't bury one as Grice was, was rolling over in the crease. Uh, Boquist had a chance that was stopped. And then Larkin from Raymond at 14.45 makes it one nothing for Detroit. So this is that opportunistic offense from Detroit. Uh, Roslovic and Rasmussen were unfriendly. So we go to the second period. Uh, early wings chance was held. Valeno had a chance that was saved as well. Now, I've heard it pronounced both Valeno and Valeno. I don't care. Uh, pressed by Columbus at three minutes. I'll just alternate between the two. Not a big deal. Uh, Bean had a shot saved. Again, send him to the house if he wants to, you know, explain it, he can. Um, I've always heard it said Valeno, but yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, Rasmussen then scores from Domestikov and Ronick at 2 nothing. I'm going to have fun with this because whatever. So 2 nothing for Detroit. Um, it, was, it was not a great goal. This is one that Elvis likely would want back. Hello, little bunny. So Dandelion, because I'm doing a video, she's decided to come out and walk around. It's like she's a cat. Um, I can get into trouble. Dad's busy. So yeah, not a goal. Uh, not a good goal. And it's Rasmussen's first of the season. You could see Rasmussen kind of being like, oh, that went in. He didn't expect that. He was kind of throwing it at the net with the idea of a, a bounce coming out to his teammate there. Uh, Columbus then gets a power play for delay of game. Uh, Sillinger uh, couldn't elevate one. And he's getting frustrated with it. Uh, trying to elevate the puck. There were two opportunities there. Couldn't get that in the net. Uh, the Wings then finish the kill. Columbus gets another power play. Bjorkstrand had a shot that was saved. Uh, the Wings killed the second one. Uh, well, if you want if you want the food, okay. There's there's a bowl of food there. She decided she's going to eat it now. She wasn't eating it earlier. So Jenner uh, would, would score from Nyquist and Peak at 13.07, and it was three efforts... Uh, from Jenner before that one went in. So nice stick to itiveness there by Jenner. And then Boquist adds one from Chinikov and Bayreuther at 14.55. So very quickly, a 2 to nothing lead for Detroit in Columbus becomes 2-2. And the fans are back into it. You're now giving Merzlikens the opportunity after what was a rough goal for him on that 2 nothing goal to come back and, and, and make this a win. Uh, and the nice, the, the Boquist goal I thought was nice. It was kind of from the goal line. It was right in front of the goal line there. We then get two minutes of four on four late, but it's tied going to the third. The Kaiser with a misplay on a Bertuzzi pass. Uh, that goes out to center ice. So it was during a, a pressure early on for the Red Wings, and uh, that's what happens is the Kaiser misplays it. Ernie hits a post on a set play off the faceoff. Columbus presses then. Grace making saves. Both goalies sharp the first five minutes. Tie game. That's what you would expect from them. Um... Bertuzzi then draws a power play. We end up with a minute and nine seconds of four on four as Gagne takes a penalty. 
The Wings get chances four on four, then Columbus gets the power play, but everything's killed off. The Wings then scored, but Bertuzzi with the high stick. And the referee immediately says that was a high stick. You see on the replay that it was. Be easy to miss that. And uh, he explained it to Tyler Bertuzzi and Bertuzzi. It's kind of like, yeah, all right, because what are you going to do? Uh, there's a replay right there showing you played this, played this, uh, the puck uh, above your shoulder. And so, yeah, it's a high stick. Um, Zadina then had a chance that was defended. Columbus presses with nine minutes left. Danforth with a chance. Danforth, Danforth making his debut at 28 years of age. So that's a good story. A guy late in his career managing to come in, get his start. And I thought he played well. We'll see if he's in the next game for Columbus too. Uh, there was a near miss then by Peak. However, Raymond wouldn't miss. He scores from Bertuzzi and Larkin at 13:31. That puts Detroit up three to two. And I and I was thinking, so maybe Detroit's going to steal one in Columbus. Uh, that could be huge for them, and that could be tough for Columbus in a Metro division that's stacked. However, uh, Valeno had a chance that was stopped. Chinikov then gets a break, and he scores. I was expecting to rate Chinikov break and stopped or robbed, denied, goes wide. He scored. From Voracek and Sillinger at 15:42. Nice celebration after that goal, too. Uh, Robinson then had a rush chance that wouldn't go, but late in the game, Wierenski scores from Nyquist and Jenner at 18:41. So they pull the goalie with a minute left. Uh, there was an empty net goal missed by Elvis. Gemmers Leakins tried it. So with 28.3 seconds left, uh, that was an icing. Now, Detroit calls a timeout, which I thought benefited Columbus too, because they just iced the puck, right? So you're letting their defenders uh, rest up as well. And sure enough, Texier gets the empty netter from Robinson and Corrali at 1957. Columbus wins 5-3. to three. They go to 8-5 and five on the season. Detroit drops to 8-7-2 and two with the loss. And again, this could be one of those ones that, you know, weeks, months down the line, we look back at and say, you know, that game in Columbus, that was key. Uh, shots 10-7 to seven Columbus in the first, 17-7 to seven Columbus in the second, 13-11 to 11 Detroit in the third. Final shots 38-37 to 37 for the Blue Jackets. Power plays Detroit 0-1, for 1. Columbus 0-3. for 3. The hits 28-24 Columbus. Grace saves 33 out of 37 at one end. Merzlikens saves 24 out of 27 at the other. And like I said, power rankings, the Islanders took a bit of a drop. Columbus takes a bit of a, a jump. And for Detroit and Tampa, I said, yeah, no, I, I, I leave them where they're at. So just just kind of a look at things, because I know that's that's always a conversation along the lines of, hey, this team went 3-0 this week. Why didn't they move up? It all depends. Uh, and again, it depends on the game. It depends on the opponent. Not all wins are created equal. Not all losses are created equal. But hey, there you go. Two games are done for tonight. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.